MMA Inside the Cage. We'll preview Deep's next event in Japan, name a new featured fighter of the week from Dare Fight Sports, and hit you with 12 more exciting clips of the week. MMA Inside the Cage, presented by Elevation Training Mask. Welcome to MMA Inside the Cage. I'm your host, Cyrus Fees. Next to me, he is a long-lost Kardashian sibling, Casey Oxenay. That's big news. I don't know anything about that, brother. I don't oh. watch that show. Everybody oh. knows that I'm all about Dallas these Dallas. days. Dallas. Oh, so Larry Hagman just passed away. Well, I'm news. halfway through season four, in case you haven't heard. J.R. Ewing was shot. Whoa. Absolutely. But he's okay. He's recovering nicely, and they have brought his assailant to justice. I was worried about Well, that. he's not going to press any charges because he doesn't want a scandal, and honestly, you know, she didn't mean it. Oh, okay. Well, thanks for filling us in. Was that 30 years later? I appreciate that. Casey, this week we look at the great Japanese organization Deep, look at a new feature fighter of the week, and much more. But let's get started with the news flurry. Right off the top, we go to World Series of Fighting, where the only two announced fights are Tyson Nam, Marlon Moraes, which is going to be a great fight, along with President Ray Seppo fighting on the card against an unnamed opponent set for March 9th. They only have two fights set, and you have to wonder did they spend all their money in the first one? Why are they not promoting it more? What's going on with World Series well, you, of I mean, You have to be concerned because you've not heard anything, and especially with NBC involved, but I am interested to see Tyson Nam. Marlon Marais go at it. Of course, Tyson Nam with the big win over Eduardo Dantes last year. Yeah. And then uh, right, Marlon Marais finishing off Miguel Torres this yeah. last fight, uh, first uh, World Series of Fighting. So to see these guys clash, it's really interesting. They're both on fire, but only one can advance. Then Ray uh, Seffo. Right. Of course, Ray Seffo, it's, it's always interesting to see the president hop in there and actually take his lumps <laughs> with everybody Stiffer. else. Yeah. yeah, no doubt about it. You don't see Dana White jumping there in the octagon. MMA, WSOF, and hopefully we'll see something really come together for World Series of Fighting. Off to EFC Africa, where a tough 17 -K Cast member Fraser Opie has been announced to be on the March 1st EFC Africa 18 card. This is big news. Taking on Jason Culverwell. You have to wonder what's going on with Tough. He must not have made the house because he's already announced another fight. But EFC Africa has to be happy to have a South African fighter back in the fold, a real talented one. Well, Fraser Opie first made his impression felt in the UK. He was on a tear there. Uh, of course, most notably uh, and most recently, a uh, cage contender where he had that big win over Ivan Salivary. Yes. Uh, of course, he went on tour with Tough. Nobody knows. They're so secretive. Nobody knows what happened there. But obviously, we're going to see him down there at EFC Africa and doing big things there, and so it's very exciting. Oh, they have to be real happy. It's EFCAfrica.com for more on the big event in March. Finally, this last weekend, we saw the end of Strike Force. Kind of sad. One big surprise in the main event, but other than that, it was things that we expected. It was a very lopsided card. We saw wins from all the favorites. Musasi, Tim Kennedy, Pat Healy, Josh Barnett, all grabbing wins. All eyes were on Daniel Cormier, of course. He's about ready to make that jump into the heavyweight division. Looks solid over Deion Starring. Uh, Casey, what was your real highlight of the night? Well, first, I want to say props to Deion Starring. That guy held in there for two rounds. Everybody, that was such a lopsided fight on paper that nobody gave uh, Starring you know, much more than a minute in that fight. So he did really good, stood up a few times. But of course, Cormier, he works with uh, UFC King Cain Velasquez. Yeah. He is so tough and, and used to guys being resilient, so he did what he had to do. Now, to me, the highlight, of course, was Tarek Safadine and Nate Marquardt. Yeah. That fight was incredible. Safadine doing what he did. You know, I was there uh, in person when he fought and lost to Tyron Woodley uh, nearly two years ago. And and, you know, Woodley was the guy that they expected to come up and sort of take that strike force crown if anyone was going to. That didn't happen. Safadine actually comes back, does what Tehran couldn't do to Nate Marquardt. That's defeat him. Five straight rounds. Beautiful fight. And, you know, even though the, the, the strike force uh, title is now defunct, that's a huge position for Tarek Safadine to come in moving into that UFC. And you never know. You might never actually see a Tarek Safadine Tyron Woodley mm -hmm. fight in the It'd UFC because be awesome. Woodley is in the UFC right now. So 2013's first clip of the week competition started last week. And we got the voting going once again. Big response, but only one fighter could win the prize pack, the training mask, all that good stuff. And that winner is... It's Veronica Rothlinghauser from Invicta FC. You gotta love the KO from Veronica. InvictaFC.com for more. Now, Casey, what's the prize pack looking like for this week? Well, you know, my man, it's the Elevation Training Mask 2.0. Great stuff from Gamma Labs and apparel from Hunter MMA and, of course, BAMP Five Gear. Big time prize pack there. We're gonna see what's new with the awesome videos from Fightland.com and our feature fighter of the week. And in round three, a look at deep. But first, it's your first four finalists for Clip of the Week. <laughs>
That's it. That's all she wrote, man. MMA Inside the Cage, presented by Elevation Training Mask. Welcome back. It was only a month ago or so when we looked at the trailer for Fightland.com, a brand new website. Well, since then, they picked up steam, put out some great videos, and uh, what I really like about it is it kind of gets into the mind of the fighter, real inside stuff. It sure does, and in an era when you see all this mainstream stuff going on in the websites and the television programs, it's really cool to go back, really see what's happening in the psyche uh, of the fighter. Matt Rustin, of course, a pro fighter himself. He spent a lot of time behind the camera with this project, uh, really taking from his personal experiences mm -hmm. to see you know, what really stands out in the psyche of these fighters. Of course, he was at TriStar. He's been at Jackson's. He's very proud of the stuff they did with Winkle John. So I'm excited to see this thing, this project, continue on the way it has. I think so, too. I love it. Well, well let's check out this clip for a very intriguing story. It's international, which we really like that, about Cuba's first mixed martial arts team. <laughs> No es bastante fácil, pero estamos muy haciendo movimientos, estamos entrenando para un futuro poder ser futuros campeones. Más de la mitad de mi vida he hecho artes marciales mixtas porque desde niño he practicado judo, boxeo, taekwondo y tengo eso en la sangre. Pero ninguno ha unido las artes marciales como tal y yo soy el primero en hacer esa unión de todas las artes marciales en solo uno para formar las artes marciales mixtas en Cuba. Respecto a la formación de la, de la MMA en Cuba, es muy difícil, es de mucho sacrificio, producto a que no se ha expandido muy fuerte, producto a que el viaje, sí, la visa, el viaje, el presupuesto que lleva para poder hacer un equipo grande, donde muchos cubanos quisieran estar en las filas de la MMA. Dos. So it's Fightland.com for the full-length feature videos. Wait, we love this stuff, man. Last week, we started our Gamma Labs Feature Fighter of the Week. Our next feature fighter comes from the most dangerous game show, Dare Fight Sports, in Thailand. It's the man they call the Battery. Marco Pateri is regarded as the best heavyweight in Finland and is making a name for himself at Dare. Four-fight win streak, real nasty individual, and a lot of fun to watch. Well, if you research Marco Pateri, you're going to see that he has a 4-1 record, you know, some basic info on his height and weight and so forth, but that's before you dig deep 
deeper into this whole dare scenario that he's got going on right now. Of course, adapted the moniker of the battery. Yeah. And that, that's really, really unique because you, know, you don't know what he's doing. This guy is crazy. The, the whole world's most dangerous game show, it, it appears as though these guys are walking in almost Lionheart style, uh, John claude <laughs> Van Damme. You don't know. And, and that's what makes it so intriguing, so interesting, because Marco Pateri is not only just a great fighter, he is a very interesting character as well. I agree. I love watching him. He's currently in the quarterfinal of the Million Dollar Tournament and could easily take home that $125,000 prize. It's darefightsports.com for more. We're going to have a look at Deep after the break and a preview of Deep 61. But first, your next four finalists for Clip of the Week. I also think that, that now Connor's coming out in a traditional stance. He's no longer in southpaw, which yep. means either I don't I don't know much about the guy, which means either he was trying to come out southpaw to confuse him or throw him off. Oh, deep oh, duty. Nice That's deep, deep, deep. 